Well, welcome back to my shop. What I'm going to be doing today, making some small turnings, bowls, open segment. I'm going to make them with a thin ring, and then a thicker ring of contrasting material, and a thin ring, a thicker ring, etc. Well, you've seen me do this before, probably. But what's different today, and the one I want to focus on, I'm going to make one out of yellow heart and African blackwood. Now, if you've seen my video on woods, you'll know that the African blackwood I got is all scraps, all small pieces, cutoffs from somewhere. Can't afford it. If I was a good rich man, I'd have a pallet of African blackwood, but I don't. What I have is a few scraps. So I'll show you what I'm going to do with them. And I don't know how many bowls I'm going to end up making, but this is the one I want to focus on. So first thing I'm going to do, of course, is make a base with yellow heart. Same way I always make bases. Put it in the cold jaws, turn a mortise, turn a guide for the bandsaw, cut the mortise, cut it on the bandsaw, and put it in a chuck. So let's go ahead and start making a base. I've got the base ready now, like I said, like I do in all my other videos, so if you don't know how I do it, I've shown quite a few videos. Now I'm using my generic drawing here. What I'm going to do is put in a thin layer of African blackwood, and then a thicker layer of yellow heart, and a thin layer of African blackwood thicker layer of yellow heart. I'm not going to go too high with it. I'll probably end it right here at the third African blackwood and then put a solid ring on it. So my base measured four and a half inches. So the first African blackwood, I'm going to make it four and three quarter inches. And of course it'll be open segment. Now I can't run these through a drum sander obviously. So what I did, I sanded one side of them flat and give me a good glue surface. Just one side. Now I'm going to take them to bandsaw and I'm going to cut them off about an eighth of an inch wide. I'm going to shoot for an end size of 0.1 inches. So I'm just going to take them to bandsaw and cut some out. Then I'm going to cut them into open segment sizes. The open segment sizes I'm going to use 16 segments per ring. Make sure I get the open segments this time. Okay. 16 segments per ring, four and three quarter inches. It's going to be 0.6614. So that's what I'm going to cut them to after I get them cut off at an eighth of an inch. Now, because the segments are so thin that I'm doing on, I've got to get my glue table really close. But I still want enough space so I don't get a lot of glue on here. So I've got it set, got it leveled, got it locked down. I took alcohol and wiped off all my previous marks on the index wheel. Now I've got to mark it for 16 segments. Sixteen segments means 32 indexes. That means every sixth one will be marked. First I'll mark one red. Then I'll count out six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and mark a blue one. Then I'll count out six and mark a red one. I'm going to do this all the way around so I'll have 16 blue and 16 red. I'm going to start with the red index. It don't really make any difference which one you start with. But I always start with the red just out of a matter of habit. Now, remembering 
Only one side of the segments has been sanded, so I've got to be careful and remember which side to glue on. And then, just like any other segment, a very thin layer of glue, thin layer of glue, These things are tiny. In 10 seconds. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and glue the rest of the segments up on this ring. It's been 15 minutes. Now these are thin enough where if I actually had to turn them, I could without them breaking. Taller segments, if you try turning the tops, they'll break and split and crack. The glue won't let go, but they will break. But thin ones like this, you can actually turn them if you have to, if you're careful. But I think I can get away with just sanding these because they're pretty constant thickness. So I'm going to get my sanding. chalk's gone so I'm ready to go put the second ring on now I got the next ring cut yellow heart I cut it one inch diameter bigger than the base and I'm gonna glue them on they're all set to go don't have to line them up any certain way they're all the same there's no pattern so I'm gonna Move the camera and get a shot of that as I start to glue them up. Got the platform set up. Don't have to be quite so close this time because these are a lot thicker. Don't have to worry about which side to glue. The both sides have been sanded. And of course, I'm using the blue indexes. Now I can start with any index because there's no pattern. So I just pick one. We'll go ahead and glue one on. Now what happened to my paper to wipe my finger on? I don't know where it's at. Light layer of glue. And of course, 10 seconds. That's it. It's glued on. Go ahead and do the rest. The yellow heart ring's been glued on and sanded. I got the next African blackwood ring cut. Segments for it. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it on, and I'm going to glue on one more yellow heart ring and one more African blackwood ring. Then I'll be making a solid ring for the top. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and get them glued on. I got the second row of yellow heart segments cut. Cut that ring half inch bigger than the first yellow heart ring. And I got the uh, African blackwood sliced into thin pieces. Got the back marked, the end sanded side. So I'll know which side is sanded when I cut it in the segments. After I get this ring glued on, I'm going to cut these segments out of these. The same size as those and put them on the same diameter. So this is the last yellow heart ring and then I'll put these on. And then I'll make the closed segment ring for the top. I'm using this new jig to test it out, gluing on segments. After I glued on some segments, I removed it to turn the inside some. When I started gluing on this ring here, after I turned it some, I soon realized that they weren't lining up correctly. Now I hadn't moved the index wheel, so something else was wrong. I took them off before I got them glued up. Started all over again with this ring. What I realized is if this isn't put back in the exact same spot, same angle from the center with the tool wrist, they're going to be off. You can tell right now the segment's lined up. But I'm going to exaggerate, but if it was off this much, you can see the segment's not even close to lined up. So just a little bit, it's enough for the eye to catch it if they're not lined up. So if I remove it, I've got to be very careful and get it back in the exact same angle that it was to start with. I got it back now, and I'm going to finish. I only got one more row of segments, the African blackwood to glue on. So it's back now, and I will finish this up. So I'm going to go ahead and glue on that last row, because I think about this problem. I cut a 16 segment, 5 and 3 quarter inch ring. Got it dry clamped now, checking the joints. If you don't know how to make a basic segmented ring, I got a video on my channel just on that. So I'm going to glue it up, and it'll go on the top. And that'll finish off all the rings, and I'll be able to finish turning the inside, sand it, put finish on it, and turn the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this ring up. The inside's been turned, the outside's been turned, sanded, finish put on them shellac. Got the edge tape so I can reverse it on the coal jaws. Now you've seen me do this in many other videos, so turning it and sanding it is the same as all the other videos. I did not use friction polish on this. I don't like it on the open segments. It just makes a mess. So I just put straight shellac on this. Now I'm going to reverse it on the coal jaws. Okay, with the live center on the tailstock to hold it in the cold jaws using the tapered pins, I'm going to go ahead and turn the bottom, sand it, and finish it off. It's finished now. And that is how I use small pieces of scraps, scrap wood. You can see it come out okay. All the African black would come out okay on it. It's a nice little turning, I guess. Also, when I was doing this, I was running checks on this gluing platform. And I found what could be a major problem. If for any reason, I remove this before all the segments are glued on. It's going to be hard to get it lined back up again. Getting the centers lined up is no problem. That's on the tailstock. It's getting it lined up this way. 
A little bit of variance will throw the segments off enough so the eye will see it. Now I got them off on this one. I, it's when I found it. And I got them back on. So it can be done. But I'm going to have to think about that for a while. The problem of removing the drilling platform and returning it to the same place I solved very easily. First, I glued a small strip, a guide, in the middle of the platform. And then I took the post I used and put a lock collar on it. So when I put the post back, I can put it back in exactly the same height it was. And then when I use it, I will position it right next to the guide. So it's always in the same position. That way, if I remove it and I put it back on, it'll always end up in the same spot. So that should take care of that little problem. I can put the post right back in to the stop collar. And then the stop collar is positioned right right here when I put it down it's in the center which is the most stable position and it'll always come out exactly the same as when I took it off so I can take it off and put it back on and get it right back where it was so that solves that problem so I hope you enjoyed this little video and I'm glad you stopped by and I hope you come back to see my next video thank you